fucked on me up, huh? Because here he is. What that piece can you deduce yourself? I'm Prime Minister Pete Nice. I used to be in the group third base with Def Jam. Did a lot of other things at Hip Hop, managed MF Doom when he was in the group KMD, but right now I'm the co-curator of the Universal Hip Hop Museum with my brother Paradise Gray, who's the head curator. And we've been working on the preservation of a lot of hip hop history. And down here in Valley Us, we got uh, at 98 Orchard Street, we have 50 years of hip hop flyers exhibition that we curated together and we have a lot of great legendary artists like Easy AD from Cold Crush, people who are artists who participated who are also collecting their own history. So we have Anthony Riley who's one of the flyer artists. We have newer cats even from the west coast like Cut Chemist who's an addict, he's an addict to flyers. The guy DJ Ross One who's a kid who grew up in Cincinnati and started to collect flyers. Short Shot La Rock, whose collection is right here, is the largest collection of flyers in the country. And then we have guys who made the flyers, also like Riff, Riff 170, who did the, the flyers for Herc at the Hevelo in 1975. So it's pretty much all about preserving you know, all this history that's just on paper. You know, it's fragile. A lot of it's been lost through the years. But like, we've had people, you know, step up. Like, I, I saved flyers when I was a kid. Paradise Gray. He saw this flyer, he tells a story right here about how he saw that flyer posted up on the street saw, and he thought it was like superheroes, like comic books. And he went to that party, say the flyer, and it's right in the case right over there. So that's 1979. So it comes kind of full circle. What motivated you to start saving flyers? I mean, my, myself, I saved flyers just like when we did a show, like the first time I was ever on a flyer it was 1986 at the Empire Inn in Brooklyn. I was on it, my manager was Lamumba, who was Professor X from X Clan, Paradise's partner. And I was in this group called Synquan Nun from Bed Stuy. And we were on with, I mean, we were like the opening group. It was like Dana Dane, Whistle, I think Salt and Pepper was supposed to be on it, and Ultimate Three, but we got on stage. And then like someone, there was a shootout and someone tried to shoot one of the ultimate three, I think. So the whole thing got canceled after we did like, maybe like half a song. So I had the flyer for that. So that, that kind of started like when you're in a show, sometimes you might save the flyer. And then when I was in third base, we'd save flyers and posters. And then I started to, you know, see other guys who had the older ones. And one of my boys, Jay Blast, who I was reintroduced by Stretch Armstrong when he did his flyer book, you know, introduced me to phase two and that's kind of when I started working with phase two on a flyer project with his man KD, his right hand man and you know that's unfortunately he passed before we could finish that project but that's why we dedicated this whole thing to phase. So that's how this whole thing came about? How did the idea come about? Yeah man, I mean like you know the Cornell University had the first real hip-hop archive and it was based on Buddy Esquire's collection and you know Buddy and FaZe were always like one-two punch like best fight and however FaZe would tell you true true mathematics would tell you that he was number one <laughs> he would not give that up and he but Buddy even like you know realized that you know like you can't be the style master you know the originator and you know I mean I mean but those two guys did more flyers they probably did like 80 percent of all the flyers from like 1978 all the way through 85 or 86. So, I mean, they're the true masters, but there are a lot of guys like Anthony Riley, like you said, Rip 170, and a lot of unknown guys, and even some promoters. There's a promoter named Winston Sanders who was doing shows back from the early 70s. He, did this, he designed this flyer right here. And not that it's like a phase two type flyer or like a Cisco kid with the artistry and the drawing, but you know, they were putting together different flyers. That, that was a Queens flyer. Uh, that's what's up. All right. So that's um. So this the whole all the flies here are your personal archives. There, there's a lot. Paradise. There's a lot that most the majority of the flyers here are mine in Paradise. But there's a large group from Easy AD from Cold Crush who, you know, he he saved a lot of flyers, man. It's almost like he's really like a hoarder. Like he's wow. um, he's unbelievable with his that's his fine. collecting, like. My man even collected some of his braids. I think he might have his braids that he had in the battle from Fantastic and Cold Crush and Harlem World. Like, he still has his suit that he performed in in Harlem World against Fantastic Five. 
So it's guys like that who, you know, like really inspired us. And, you know, even like Charlie Ahern who did Wild Style, he had his flyers that Fat Five Freddy made for him for the amphitheater jams for Wild Style. So he has his flyers in some of these cases over here. Um, and then there's guys like, you know, DJ Divine from the Infinity Machine in Queens. Like this, this flyer was on the wall in his basement for like, Maybe 40 years. You can see, even see how the boiler in his basement. Uh, was <laughs> like, he part of DXT's crew? No, 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 no. He, yeah, he, yeah, he was. He was. They were was Infinity the MCs. Yeah, he was Infinity, Infinity Machine, Machine, which was like the biggest sound system with the Disco Twins and Queens. So, and then you know you have like DJ Reggie Wells from Harlem. He's another guy who was on every. He's on every fly back then in Harlem. Disco guy. Yeah, exactly. But even though you say people say he's a disco guy in Hollywood. This is part of hip hop. I mean, you know, when you Reggie Wells started out as an MC, he wasn't even a DJ at Superstar Cafe in 1976. We got pictures of him on the mic. Now, he wasn't rapping like Melly Mel or Creole in '78, but all these things evolved. That's the way we look at it. And like, you know, Paradise older than me. He was with PTJ Jones in 1979, but I wasn't there. I was like coming up like '84, '85, '86. So. I'm like a new jack pretty much to all the pioneers, but all I can do is just listen to their stories, put them out there, and like everyone can have their own opinion on, you know, who was first, who was second, which sometimes is irrelevant because everybody did their thing. That's what's up. So that was the motivating factor for putting this together? Yeah, I mean, just to preserve the history and tell the stories of all these guys. Who, like, you look at it like, hip-hop artists today could not comprehend that all these guys did this, like, every weekend for, like, 10 years. Like, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, maybe sometimes Wednesday night in 10 different places around the city. Wow. You know, and, the, and you have these guys making the flyers. It was like a whole cottage industry, and they didn't make a lot of money doing it. Like, a lot of promoters lost their shirt. Van Silk had many nights where he lost his shirt. Other nights, they did well. But, like, FaZe would even tell me, I would show him a flyer. He's like, I remember that flyer. And I also remember that no one showed up, and the, the guy lost his shirt. Then he'll look at another one and say, Oh, well, that night it was a line all the way around the block. You know, the guy got paid. So it all depends on, you know, the. Yeah, and it all depends. You look at when, when records, like when the Crash Crew and Furious Five, Freedom, High Powered Rap, like then people go and they want to see your record on the flyer. So then you even look at like Cold Crush, even they had the greatest stage show, but they never had the hit, hit record like the Furious did, but they still. You know, excel because they had such a great stage show. So, but but then you look, you can see how going into my year, 85, 86, there being Rakim, BDP, like you gotta have South Bronx, you gotta have, you know, everybody's president. That's that's what it became all about the records. Okay. How long is this uh, um, ex exhibition going on for? Right. So we. We opened the exhibition like a soft opening last week, but this is the, the actual opening reception. So this is going to be open until June 30th. So we're also working with a company called Fine Art Hip Hop that was started by Ed Young, who is one of the uh, founders of the Source, and he's also an uh, advisory board member at the Hip Hop Museum up in the Bronx. And we're going to have like a an online auction with a lot of the doubles from all of our different collections. Like Easy AD gave us some flyers. Me and Paradise gave some. Cut Chemist. All these guys just chipped in a couple flyers, and now it's going to be probably like a hundred flyers wow. in the. Uh, and you know, there's, there's even guys who Onyx from KMD, who was with MF Doom. You know, rest in peace. He he showed up here tonight. And he was bugging out that he saw himself on a flyer from yeah, like 1991. You know, yeah. so that's why like even guys who are from 79, 78, it's like guys from the 90s. You know, bug out just as much seeing the flyers. That's what's up. All right. So, um, anything you would like to add on? Any closing words? You know? I, you know, one, I wanted to thank everybody for coming out and supporting this. We've had a lot of support at the Hip Hop Museum so far, all the way around. But it's, it's good to see that people can respect the true history and, you know, the real originators and pioneers of hip hop, which, you know, usually don't get a lot of light. And a lot of them forgot. Like, we have guys like DJ Smokey. Dude, most people don't know who Smokey is, but you asked Cool Herc, and that was like his nemesis. And he's an important figure in hip hop, and we just want to try to tell his story, all these untold stories. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Definitely. Peace and prosperity. Thank and you. And you want to put any contact info? 
Yeah, well, you can uh, reach me at Pete, P-E-T-E, at UHHM.org. That's for any business related to the museum or if you have a donation or want to contribute to the museum. And then on uh, social media, I'm at Rushtown298 on Instagram. So that's pretty much my main things out there if you need to get me. All uh, right, thank you very much. Yo, thank you. Do you want me to mention that thing about... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you're with the Amsterdam News, and we've discovered that the first actual time that the words hip-hop were used in print in a newspaper or any type of periodical was in the Amsterdam News in January of 1980. And we have the article, and we're going to do a little press release when we have it, so we'll keep you posted. And we'll have you there, and we could do a whole full-blown story about it on how Amsterdam News was really ahead of the game, like with hip hop. Like they were reporting in the earliest days. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. You know, actually, um, like I said, in the coming days or coming weeks, I'd like to come back. You, you have the time to go not yeah, to every we'll, single. I, I could detail. go through with the whole tour with you. Definitely, I'd love to do that. Twelve months later, your mom studded the side of your grill, ill creation.